Who who do you think has made the most money in crypto? Well, obviously, Ji Hong Wu. <laughs> uh, I don't think he made. Okay, how much do you think Ji Hong made? Yeah, he's he's got to be worth twenty five billion. Run the numbers, good God Almighty! He's the only manufacturer. Uh, Bitman. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the block rewards in total over the years Bitman existed add up to that much. I'm so sorry, even. Say it again. So Bitmain's income is a function of the block reward. They can't get their customers to pay them more than the total Bitcoin block reward. I don't think the total block rewards for all of the time Bitmain existed adds up to that much. I don't think he's got that much. He could have a billion or two, I think. No, I don't no, think no, he's got that's, 25. That's not, that's not where they're making their money. <laughs> Good God, man. They are the largest Bitcoin miner in the world and always have been, and they have never. I know Jihan personally, I think he's... He's probably the most humble man I've ever met. Uh, no pretensions. He's never sold a single fucking Bitcoin. I don't believe never. that. I don't believe that. I think he went all in on BCH and got the shit wrecked out of him. And I've seen him yelling on YouTube, it is Bitcoin cash, not B cash. I've seen him yelling and I've seen him get wrecked on that BCH chart hard as fuck. I don't, and, right. and that little bitch blocked me on Twitter, mean. so. I ain't got nothing nice to say about him. He tried to kill the real Bitcoin with a fake copy of it, and he fucked up entirely well, so much that they removed him from his own company that he founded. And they uh, just put on. him back. So the, question, the question wasn't, who do we like or dislike? Yeah, really? Although I did volunteer, I like. Okay. <laughs> the question was, who do you think the richest man is? Yeah, it's you might either, be right. You might be right. It's either, I, I think, him, or Brock, it's either him or Brock Pierce. Right. So, we, so EOS hit it home run, 4.2 billion raise. I'm not sure how much Brock got to keep. I don't know how Brock well, and Peter Thiel. He, he had billions before he asked. Good God almighty. The man owns half the fucking Pachinko uh, machines in China, for fuck's sake. All right, I know he's a good, another good friend of mine. So yeah, Brock seems no. to have good Pardon? power in the ecosystem. Sure. like I, I agree. Brock's in the player list. Jihan's in the player list. Uh, Coinbase, Brian Armstrong's in the player list. Yes. I think I I think for my limited uh, you have you have other knowledge to other revenue streams these guys have because you have better you know relationships with them. From my perspective as an outsider, more so than you are, um, I think the Block One guys with their four point two billion raise on EOS made more money than Brian plus Arthur from Bitmax plus Satoshi plus you know all those guys combined. Just look yes. at the math. So yes, so I Jihan and, and EOS guys top two. Yeah, that, that's that's my that's my guess. Who would you guess? I'm with you on uh, I'm with you on all fronts. I, the only okay. thing that I thought was maybe uh, I mean I don't know about Brock's share of EOS, what percent cut he got because he kind of got like publicly removed a little early. Listen, and, that was that's a maneuver for yeah, PR. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, okay. Who 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 do you think the unhappiest man in crypto is? Or more? Roger, Roger Ver. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I would put two of them in there. I, I think Roger and Craig Wright together. Uh, Bitfinext. Bitfinext seems pretty a, unhappy. Would make, good, would make a good team, wouldn't they? Uh, who? Roger and... And, and, and Craig Wright. I, here's the thing. I, I did an interview with Roger a very long time ago. I, I, you know, I met him in 2013 at a Bitcoin conference, and he's a nice guy. He, had, he wants good things for the world. And I told him on stream, I'm like, why are you interacting with this guy that pretends to be Satoshi and he just kept doing it and now like when you lay in bed with bad bedfellows you wake up with fleas and you know because he gave this guy press time he created that uh that fork that tried to kill his coin so he created a coin to try and kill the real bitcoin and then someone else came along that he empowered and tried to kill his coin with another faker version of the fake version so you know third <laughs> tier fake and, you know, it's like that didn't have to happen, right? We, do you think Satoshi invented a system to remove trust and rely on signatures so that he could personally require trust and give no signatures? doesn't make any sense. He invented something to do the opposite, right? Like proof is cheap. We have encryption. We have signatures now. You don't need to take people's words for shit. Which is why you keep getting fake Bitcoin inventors all the time now I, I will say and this is a controversial opinion i have that people don't like i think satoshi is deceased or a bitch vitalik invented ethereum and he's standing on stage and he's not the most buff looking dude okay he weighs maybe 100 pounds and he stands on stage as the founder of a cryptocurrency 
and isn't a coward and doesn't run away and still writes software and still writes improvements and still donates to charity, supportsends.org, you know, trying to save your life with longevity research. He does all those things and he doesn't hide away like a little bitch. Now people say, oh, well, Satoshi did what, you know, no, he could do, if he was alive, he could do the same thing. I'm sure he ain't smaller okay. than Vitalik, right? Okay, 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 okay. Now, first of all, whoever Satoshi is, is completely fucking insignificant. We know all the people who were involved, right, in the, in the development. Don, Don He's Brad got a million Tank. coins. He's still got 5% of the supply. Pardon? It matters. He's got 5% of the okay. supply. He's still That's got a million fine. coins. That's fine. That's fine. Um, you know, if Craig Wright was around, there's a whole bunch of people. No. You can buy some authoring software for $79.95 to run against the uh, Satoshi white paper. And every every single person involved in this, by the way, has written multiple technical papers. If you look at it, you don't need any software. Let me just tell you. If you look at the white paper, you'll notice two very unusual things. Number one, all of the spelling for words which have different spelling in American and English, and there are about five words in there that do, have the British spelling. The second telling thing is, after every sentence are two spaces. Now, this is a minority of, of choice for people who write, but every, you check it out yourself. Look at the white paper. I now, agree. You can also do timing two, analysis. There are, only, there are only two of the people that could have been involved, which are British, and only one of them Double spaces after a period, fuck me, look it up. I mean, people going, who is it, who is it? It's easy. So you can also do uh, analysis of what hours he posted to Bitcoin Talk. And you know that, so a lot of people try and be anonymous on the internet, and then there's an attack vector they're not aware of, which is a timing attack. So if you do real-time communication, and you say, hello, Richard, and I say, hello back, John, they know that you and I were communicating because my response was so short in time next to your transmission. Yes. So if you really course. want to be, if you really want to be anonymous, you have to use different words and introduce random uh, delays okay, in that, that, responses. That's a, that's a possibility, but why implicate one of the other players? Yeah, sure. Like, but the thing is, if once again, Vitalik said this on stage, it makes a lot of sense. The most, you know, it's kind of like Occam's razor. The easiest way to prove that you're Satoshi is to sign from an old address. Now, it still doesn't prove that you are, but it sure eliminates a lot of other people from contention. And uh, and if anyone else is trying any other method that's not the simplest one, then they're trying to bullshit you. So if someone is telling you a lot of words that take hours and hours and hours when they can make a signature in 10 seconds, they're bullshitting you for a reason, right? The signature is is the thing that... The entire I'm system. I, I, I might have been. I might have been misled, but but if you use full authoring software, it comes out ninety nine percent who Satoshi is. So seventy nine dollars ninety five cents. Uh, I only get a twenty five dollar commission. Um, I'm front of this now. By the way, I uh, I put two. I when I first started, I put two spaces after periods because when I first started typing, I typed on a real typewriter. And that's what you did when you typed on a real typewriter. So it's kind of yeah, something fine. that yeah, old people fine. do. I'm not saying all I'm saying is only yeah. two British people, the only one of them have double spaces in all of their papers. But you, you, so you're just, you're restricting yeah. the set of people to people that were on the mailing list for a, for a cypherpunk mailing list, right? That's where you're I'm using sorry. as your input set. For your input set of possible Satoshites, you're using the, the mailing list of cryptography, the cypherpunk mailing list, right? That's your input no, set. No, 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 no. I'm just using those people we all know were involved for fuck's sake. Yeah, but that's where we know them from. That that's where that list comes there's, from. There's a history. There's a history to this. There's less than a dozen of them. Because yeah, uh, that's the mailing list. Every, <laughs> single one, every single one has written multiple papers. Doctor Adam Back has written over a hundred for fuck's sake. Randomly grab one um, and run the analysis. Uh -huh. What have you made the most money on? I won't answer that question. I guess I will. It's probably Bitcoin. Uh, what I'm have sorry, you made? What's your question? What have you made the most money on? Crypto. Which crypto? You don't have to answer. That's like a personal bullshit question. I, I would not expect you to answer that. Well, good. Good. Okay. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you're already all in and you're like, fuck it, I'm not paying taxes anyway, come and get me. I mean, really, you could fucking say whatever you want. I know. <laughs> if, and I, I said what I wanted, which is absolutely. I feel you, man. What I care about is making money. It's where I wear my own logo with a fist crushing money. It's where I started and then I retired and took 10 years off and now I'm back at it. 
it was longer actually. I retired in 2003. Now it's 2019. Maybe I started two years ago. So that's like 14 years I took off. Now I'm back at it. Um, I think making money is why people are in crypto. I, I really don't think the majority of people or even the minority are in it for a reason different. I think making money is the best thing you can do in crypto. So I think we should talk about that. Making money yeah, in crypto. That, that's a subject dear to my heart. And I All think right. that I think that that's a fundamental problem in the crypto world is that everybody's looking at it as a way to make money. Uh, no one's looking at that, what I believe was the original intent, you know, starting with uh, Adam Beck's, Beck's paper uh, back in 1985. Uh, the original intent uh, was to uh, provide a means of currency, uh, which was more powerful, uh, far quicker to transact um i halfway and, agree well I'm halfway and, with you and, and then and then i think it transformed into a freedom sort of movement like hey this is our currency we own this it came from us this didn't come from the bowels of some government or from ibm or samsung oh fuck no it came from the people um and this is the blockchain i fuck cryptocurrency if not just the blockchain um is a world transforming technology. And if people don't see that yet, then you know, move out of your mom's basement, that's all I can tell you. Um, but it is a world changing technology. So I, and I, if, we, if we use this appropriately, like if, if I'm, I'm almost an anarchist in my political beliefs. And uh, I think power to the people is, is what life is all about. And if we use cryptocurrency for an intended purpose of transacting business, for buying and selling of goods and services, then what happens? Since we are controlling where coins are being created all the time and new blockchains are being created and new ways of doing smart contracts. And if we own this technology ourselves, and don't let the government or a regulatory body or a bank tell us what to do. It can literally free you, people. I mean, what, what controls your life? Money, the dollar, the yen, the British pound. You can't pay your rent without it, can't buy a car, send your kids to school, get medical care, nothing. It controls your life. And who controls the fiat currency? Well, God knows who in some countries. Right. Feds government regulatory bodies they all influence financial institutions influence what your labor is worth if the yeah. dollar is devalued by doubling the supply your labor was what was lost so I, I agree with a lot of this um so i'll try and i usually start hammering the old blockchain and being mean to it and then be nice to it at the end i'm going to do it backwards this time i'll be nice to it up front Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum have gone up from zero to many thousands of dollars. Uh, if you know, I got into Bitcoin in 2011 when it was 30. I used to mine full blocks on my own with no pool. Back when the reward was 50 Bitcoin per block, uh, this stuff used to be free. And then that phase died out very quickly because it became very competitive. Then it went up to 20,000. Okay, so let's say you got in at 20 and it went up to 20,000. That's a thousand X. Ethereum went even higher, even faster. Ethereum did a 4,500 X in three years, three and a half years. So, yes. you know, people that got into Ethereum uh, during its initial launch where people traded Bitcoin for Ethereum uh, did better than Bitcoin holders did. And they did better faster. Uh, that was really pissed me off because I didn't own any Ethereum. I just owned a lot of Bitcoin. And that's why I became public. I'm like, hey, wait a second. I don't have any Ethereum. For, for, for a couple of years, Ethereum was was absolutely in lockstep with Bitcoin at one tenth yeah. its price. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but that was before I, for a long time, I didn't even know it existed. Starting in 2017. So, so whether blockchain can change the world or whether your cryptocurrency of choice can change the world, that doesn't really matter if you care about becoming very wealthy because you can become very wealthy with these things. If you, if you care about becoming very wealthy, we have very little adoption and yet these things are the best performing assets in the history of mankind. Imagine if we had good adoption, it would be even more insane.
Yes. So, which, which is another reason we have to adopt. We have to actually use the fucking currencies. That's where the value comes from. Why do you think maybe. Bitcoin went up in price? Because people were buying pizzas uh, with 50 Bitcoins to begin with, right? And then... About 10,000, the first one. Other people started using it. And the more you use it, the greater the demand. Uh, and, and that's, that's the of. issue. We need to increase demand again by using these currencies. There's an art, there's an art to that. So, so I, I think that's wrong. Um, and here's why I think that. First, there's mathemat like economics has a formula that states that the higher the velocity of money, which means how fast it turns over, the lower the actual value of the money. What makes a, a currency valuable is when its supply is reduced and its supply is reduced when people hold on to it for longer and don't release it. When people actually spend their money, it creates a money multiplier effect, which actually increases the credit and supply of the system, which devalues the actual money because they're happy to use the credit and other proxies that are proxies of the real thing. And then the real thing doesn't have to rise in value as much. And as proof of that, I would show you that with very little actual use and very little actual utility, we have the best looking price chart in history. And it's because there's nothing else you can do with these things. Now, there is a downside to that. You will need to continue onboarding new users and if you have a compelling value statement such as fast and affordable transactions, censorship resistance, immutable transactions, you can onboard those users. However, those users are only 5 to 10% of the ecosystem currently. If you care about using crypto, you'll use Monero because it's actually private. You will not use Bitcoin. You will not use Ethereum. We all, we all know that. <laughs> right. But if you look at the price, the price doesn't indicate that the market cares about anonymity. Most people don't take these coins into their own wallets. And I truly mean most people. There's only, only 2.8 million Bitcoin addresses that have over a thousand US dollars in them. And yes. most people have more than one address. So that's yes. maybe 2 million people that have got a grand of Bitcoin. The vast majority of people that think they're using Bitcoin are actually using exchanges, which are the opposite of what Bitcoin was invented for. Bitcoin was invented to get rid of the counterparties, not create new ones. Right. So if you okay. want to see true adoption, someone has to have the margin and the marketing budget to pay for ads that go out into the public that onboard new users. It costs 10 or $20 to onboard a new user. If you can't make 10 or $20 by onboarding that guy, you can't leave your advertisement up. You just run out of money. So the only people in crypto that have ads are scammers who have infinite profit margin, exchanges that bang you up on fees, Binary options, which bang you up on fees, margin trading, which bangs you up on fees times 100. Why do you think they give you margin? So you can trade more money than you have, so they can multiply the house advantage against you. You think you're beating the house when you have, you know, five hands at a blackjack table. No, you're just losing more money faster. They want you to have as many hands as you can possibly play. So, so I, I, I mean, hang on, hang on. The, but here's, here's something about the blockchain, which is unique. It's being applied in astonishing new ways already. You say that there, there are people aren't using it. That's bullshit. Almost everybody Somewhere. who's had a, a supply chain problem for hundreds of years uh, is now using the blockchain to, to stop all the theft and deceit that goes on in the supply chain. There's a, there's a cryptocurrency called DAI, which belies what you just said, by the way, which I, is a, a stable coin. You're, you're familiar with it, yes? Yes, yes. That it is doesn't. that is interesting. So the need. No, the, hang on, but it doesn't yeah. matter how much volume you have. It doesn't matter what happens to the crypto market. It never strays more than one percent above, one percent below, and it's working just fine. It's my it's my uh, my coin of choice just to dump things in while yeah. I'm waiting for something else. I that hope it continues that, to that work. You don't have, there's no there's no uh, you know uh, off ramp necessary. You know why get off yeah. when you got the AI. Yeah, I understand. I understand completely. Um, so I hope it continues to work. Uh, lots of cool economic inventions have been invented, such as a credit default swap, such as mortgage-backed securities, and they worked very, very well for decades. And then a yes. black swan event happened and they stopped working. And so using over, over collateralization to attempt to defend a price peg can work for a very long time, but a black swan can occur and the peg can break. I hope it never happens. But you have to understand that when you put a dollar into a stable coin, 
your actual value in that dollar is less than a dollar because you have to reduce its its value by the the black swan risk that the over collateralization wasn't enough to defend the peg. And I don't know whether that's 2% or 3% or no percent. I mean, look, Tether has huge counterparty risk and everyone seems fine with that. I mean, probably I would take a die over a Tether. So I'm, I'm just saying um, it's progress and it's good. It's peer to peer. It's open sourced. It, it is progress. This is for the people that know, uh, John. So in my, my idea of life was always, okay, you know, I want to try and live forever if I can, but I'm no good at dieting. I'm good at exercise now, but just lifting weights, not the cardio. So half, half of fitness and no dieting. So if I'm going to survive, I need technology. That's what I need. And now I think you're 74, right? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So John's 74. He's fitter than I am. He's, if you see him with his shirt off, he's put his, he'll put take pictures and put a shirt off on the, on the internet. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't want you to see what's under here. He's happy to show off his body. He's even got crypto tattoos. Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get to 74, you've got two options: try and make it last as long as you can, or go out with a bang, right? I think John chose the bang route. I, I, yeah, I, I, I have been actually going out with a bang for 35 years or more. <laughs> <laughs> the, bang just, the bang just hasn't popped yet. Okay. They need to they need to study your DNA if ever uh, if ever they have the chance, because I mean. I, I've seen some of your interviews and I believe you do experimental chemicals, designer drugs that aren't even mainstream enough for most people to know how to handle them properly. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So normal drugs are not good enough for John. John needs drugs that are a next level. Not that many people have taken them yet. <laughs> like, Let me give you an example. All right. So... Um, I mean, it's no secret that I favor cathinone so in the experimental research range. And they are, they're stimulants, but way, way more than stimulants. So one of them is a thing called methylene dioxypyrovalerone, MDPV. Now, if you remember some years back where a stranger ate another stranger's face? Yeah, it's a Florida side. story. I'm from Florida. I know all the Florida stories. Yeah, okay. So, he really was on MDPV. I don't care what the toxicology reports say, because you couldn't identify it. They didn't have any toxicology reports. <laughs> Methylene dioxypyrovalerone, I know for a fact. Well, anyway, so his problem was this. MDPV is so dosage dependent. So for every 25 pounds of weight, you want to take one milligram, one milligram. So if you take, let's say you're, you're 150 pounds, that's going to be six milligrams. If you take exactly six milligrams of exactly pure MDPV, you're going to have an experience that you will never fucking forget. I promise you. I, I would suggest that if everyone you, try this out when they're 74. No, no, let, me <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. If you take seven milligrams, you're going to eat somebody's face off. <laughs> And if you take five, you're going to feel nothing at all. So this is this is some of the problems with the new research chemicals. They are extraordinarily dosage dependent. So um, I mean, shouldn't they, in theory, cut that down so that you have to use a larger unit set so that your errors are smaller? So if you well, people do it, yeah, people do it different ways. Okay, they'll take they'll take a kilo, cut it in half, and cut that in half, cut that in half, and you just partition it out that's but if one of your cuts isn't right then you're over on one of them and you're fucked yeah see that's the problem, yeah. problem. um so no you got to spend a few thousand dollars for a scale that will measure micrograms um or then, not or just not do any of that shit just be happy with the normal drugs i mean i've taken all the normal drugs i mean you know, i'm sorry see, see if what you're um, saying about being dose dependent is true then there's also likely dosage modifiers such as body weight, metabolism level, uh, counter like other drugs that you're taking that may increase yeah, or right. decrease I mean, your metabolism. And, 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 and anybody who would ever begin to go into the cathinones is going to carry a large quantity of benzodiazepines. Right. Um, you know, to uh, take if something does go awry and, and you want to eat your landlord's face, say, uh, wait a minute, <laughs> let me pop this pill first. Oh man! Then if you still want to eat his face, yeah. huh? maybe you don't like him. 
So, I, so I asked because you're a wonderful speaker. So, you know, when I first saw you, I thought, oh, this guy's crazy. Because the first time I saw you, you were snorting coke or pretend coke off of uh, the table, and there was a bunch of uh, professional-looking ladies in bikinis surrounding you. Uh, and it was an, an advertisement that you had produced. I think you shot it in Belize. And uh, I thought, okay, that's interesting, right? You were a successful tech entrepreneur. And now it looked to me like you were going to do the social wild man kind of thing. And then, you know, I actually saw you speak on, uh, on television regarding your price prediction, your million dollar Bitcoin in 2020, end of 2020 price prediction. And it was very, very, very good. Your, your tonality and your intonation and your timing was all fabulous. So I really respect your public speaking. And it, a lot of people are hyped up about this interview that we're doing because we're both kind of the top of the crypto public speaking game. There's maybe yeah, only four I'm people that could do I'm well. Not, I'm not quite in your class yet, but, but I'm working yeah. on it, all right? You know, I've seen you wear a suit, man. It's take, different. <laughs> you, you can do it. I'm going to take a few more stimulants and see if I can't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so in crypto, I mean, it's Andreas Antonopoulos, Trace Meyer, me, you, and really no one else is a good public speaker that I can think of off the top of my head. Do you know of Roger, any other? Roger Bear. Roger Bear yeah. is a good public speaker. Yeah, that's true. As long as he stays yeah. in his talking points, but he can. That's right. He yeah, can. Like he'll, he'll stay in them. He knows what they are. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I registered satoshisvision.com uh, because he <laughs> quoted that so many times. And then someone else actually created a fork of his project with that name, which is just funny to me because I own the name. <laughs> like, right. I offered to, I'm like, Calvin, hey, buy, buy this from me because I don't want it, right? Uh, and no response. For a billionaire, you should buy the URL, the .com for your project's name. It's, it seems like a no-brainer to me, you know. I agree. Well, now that we've, now that we've stroked each other about how great we are at uh, public speaking and just about everything else. Right. Um, I, look, I, so I didn't... I bet, you, I bet your listeners want us to talk about something that matters to them. And we could talk about, okay, are you, I'll just ask my question. Are you going to eat your dick in 2020 if the Bitcoin price is not a million dollars? Or are you going to squeeze your way out of it and say that someone else is going to eat your dick on your sponsorship or something? <laughs> That's all. Well, uh, definitely the second. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I need, I'll need to consult with my lawyers about what the, uh, the protocols and uh, rules what? are. Get a clone. Bitcoin. Look, and, make a clone yeah. of yourself, and then you can use them Pardon? for harvest. You can harvest his organs and everything, man. Just make a clone of yourself. It, when well, you have a heart right. attack, you can just take his heart. You know, just make sure he doesn't. He's not smarter than you. And then you've got a movie right. situation where he tries to take over your right. life, and then you know, kill you. Well, well, the other the other thing was to hire one of the great stage musicians. I mean, I, I'm I'm friends with um, a couple of them, um, and to arrange the stage so that. Um, it would look like it's being cut off, but I can't find a single one who's willing to touch my dick. Yeah, I think I think uh, Penn and Teller could sort you, man. Pet, you just get get on the phone. He's a libertarian. Penn Gillette. I know. I, I hook you up. I, I know. I, <laughs> I, I met him in Las Vegas in 2016 when I was running. He's a tall fucker, ain't he? What's, What's going that? on with your president? He's a tall fucker. He's like six seven or something. I think. God, yes, is he tall? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, so what's up with your presidential race? And that'll be our last question. Um, well, it's still on. I mean, okay. we have a, you know, we're, we're still up and running. We have regional coordinators. We're um, negotiating with the Libertarian Party. They, the, the party leadership does not like me. I, I don't blame them, quite frankly. I, right. I have nothing about me that's in their favor. Nevertheless, uh, as a Libertarian membership who paid $25 dues, I have the right to throw my hat in the ring. Um, and I think I have enough support within the party, uh, left if nothing else, left over from 2016, to make sure that I appear in those debates that matter. Uh, John yeah. Stossel, for example, you know, right. uh, and then so the on. mustache. Yeah, I I, so, I would love so, to see. Yeah, you now, we know, we know. I mean, if if anybody out there thinks I really can become uh, the U.S. president. <laughs> and I, I would assign it a low probability. Yeah, it, it, it's impossible. <laughs> it does zero probability, people. So I don't want that job. I, I don't think it matters who's president. I really don't. Right. I mean, you get elected, you're there for four years, eight maybe if you're lucky. 
Yeah. The people who are managing you and advising you and providing information to you have been there for 30 and 40 years so long. And to them, the real control is here. You're just the next guy. Uh, here's right. the next guy. Yeah, and okay, let, what are his qualities? Let, let, let's let him do this. So yeah. you sit in that chair, you have a thousand strings attached to you. The right. CIA, the FBI, the NSA, and none of them are going to tell you jack shit. You want to find out if there's aliens in the world? I promise you presidents will be the last to know. Yeah, there's uh, a story sir. about that. Everyone, even Clinton went in there, and that was one of his things. And then as soon as they yeah. get in, you never hear about it again. So whatever yeah. they're telling them, <laughs> it shuts them right up. What, what they're telling them is you don't have a need to know. <laughs> For national security reasons, Mr. President. You know, my biggest company was 150 employees. Uh, how many employees was your biggest company? Do you remember? I don't know, a few thousand. Way yeah. too many. Way too many to be fun, I'll tell you that. Yep. And, and by the way, I'd, I'd like to point out how it's become so common to um, rate people according to their followers, <laughs> according to the likes, uh, you know, according to their retweets. Um, and I, I find it very, very humorous in, in many respects, uh, and that and that's that's hardly the measure of a, of a person by by any stretch of the imagination, other than. Oh, I know that name. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, you know, so people have less deep connections now and more shallow connections. So if you look at uh, who people marry, you know, back in the old days, people would marry within, you know, a 20 mile radius of where they lived because that's what the only people they met. Right. And yes. now people, uh, you know, they hop on Tinder and people end up marrying people that are thousands of miles away. And it's just, it's changed a lot of stuff in the culture for the worse. So, you know, if you're on Twitter, uh -huh. as I often am, they measure well, I, how I many. Think, I, think that's, I think that's good for the Zoom tool. I really do. Um, that is, yes. I, mean, I agree with that. that. The, the, the smaller the community, uh, the more inbred it becomes. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, if you live in the Appalachians way off in the mountains, you, the only people you know are your cousins, and that's who you marry. I mean, so yep. I think it's good, it's good uh, for the diversity of the gene pool. I agree with that. From the dating perspective, it is better. From the synergy and business perspective, it's better. But from the consumption of human consciousness, and you look at how humans spend their time now, they spend all of their minutes staring at a screen, hoping for the dopamine hit of the likes for people that they'll never meet, that if the shit really hit the fan, maybe some of them would be there. And so these companies, it's the, it's the, there's surveillance capitalism, and then there's attention capitalism, and they're consuming all of our consciousness. And then there's nothing left to create. There's nothing left to, to be you when you spend all day consuming someone else's uh, ideas. You know. <clears throat> I like, I like your uh, your phrase, um, consumption of human consciousness, because really I, I'd never never quite looked at it quite at that depth. But that's exactly what it is. You walk it's... into a you walk into a coffee shop and people don't even bother to look up anymore. Right. Uh, they well, they're terrified to. They yep. stay glued to that uh, flat machine, and, and if you think, if you think that that the little screen is not going to evolve into something which not just uh, consumes consciousness, uh, but imparts um, uh, ideas and, and uh, actions, I mean, you, you're doing it already. I mean, if you're driving, how many people bother to look at a map anymore and draw a route? No, you key it in. Okay. And then you obey that sweet little voice, uh, turn left here, uh, go two blocks, make a right. And by the way, I, I just wish someone would sell one of those things with options, uh, like a humorous option. You know? <laughs> the George God Carlin ass, voice. You know, so great. Like, good God, asshole, I told you to make a left. That's the third left you've missed. Shit like yeah. that. Right? You, know, you know, it's the saddest part of all of it. They get all this data about you. So Google now knows everything you search for and reads all your email because I have, I got 15,000 signups on the email, that's 17,000. And I see who the emails are. They're mostly Gmail addresses. So they, yep. they know what you're searching for. They know where you physically are because they own Android. And if they didn't own Android, they own the Google searches and they own the Google maps and they own Fitbit. So they know your heart rate. So they know when you're looking for porn, what porn you're watching and when you catch your nut. This is yes. not... And, and then after they do all of that, they still give you shitty untargeted ads anyway. So 
Yeah. So you do a search for a humidifier and you buy one and now they show you humidifiers for the next six months like you're collecting the fucking things like you need 10 of them. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I think I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs>